there's approximately 1.4 million freelancers uh, using this kind of a narrow definition uh, and probably more than three and a half million freelancers if you take the widest possible definition of that term. Um, but I think there is evidence and over that period of time, perhaps the last 10 years since, since PCG was formed, um, that uh, there's been around a 14% growth and we anticipate that will go on growing. It's now becoming a lot more common to find companies working completely as virtual setups. Um, whereby you have the founder or the founders in a small office or at home managing a team of developers scattered all over the world. Um, you know, they use sort of copywriters and translators all over the world. They have a virtual assistant rather than having a PA. Our organization is a virtual organization. Each of those individuals that I work with, uh, a finance director or a chairman or a uh, an operations uh, person and uh, a public relations person and so on, all of those people have a particular functions uh, within our board uh, and when they fulfill a particular function they then, they then uh, uh, send in an invoice and they're paid. The independent sector is a, is, is a very critical way in which uh, any organization can produce measurably better at less cost because um, some of the things that they actually need they only need two days of it or one day of it. I work for NSG Group that are one of the world's largest manufacturers of glass and glazing products. We spend more per man hour typically on a contractor than we do on a, on a permanent employee. But if you look at it in the context of uh, when the business wants to develop a new system that will save us, let's say, a million pounds a year or a million euros a year, it is clearly cost effective to, to pay contract rates to bring that resource in to develop that system. Uh, the idea that a company can be working at 70% uh, capacity is, is, is going and companies are working close to 100% capacity and that does mean that they don't have the capacity to deal with any unexpected upsurge in work um, and as a result they would need to go out to contractors for that additional work. Um, they're not able, or they're less able than in the past, to carry expertise that they're not utilising. We are increasingly focusing on our core competences and so uh, we see that in the future we would expect to increasingly use contractors for the more specialist areas that we would not consider a core competence. It's now becoming a lot more mainstream, it's becoming uh, a way, it's becoming ingrained in the way companies do things and they use them for much more fundamental ongoing tasks. Quality therefore is becoming a lot more important. We're seeing this kind of notion of reverse offshoring which is very interesting in its own right. Um, more and more countries outside the UK are actually now uh, hiring freelancers in the UK. More companies in the UK are resorting to outsourcing within their local uh, ecosystem, if you like. When you get an independent, what you see is what you get. And what you get is absolute honesty and no political agenda whatsoever. This is incredibly valuable. For, what I'm bringing to the client is two things. One is a recent fresh view of their organisation, my experience from elsewhere. The other is the fact that I am in there contracted to the client I am independent, I have purely my client's interests at heart. One of the things I value about what I do is it's mostly short-term consulting with the occasional really big project which is very interesting and that means I get to work with a wide variety of businesses. One of the things I find tremendously useful about that is that I can take ideas and principles and concepts about how I do something in one area and apply those in a completely different area. I've shared other people's experience through special interest groups and I, I can bring that sort of skill to my client as well. You have a huge amount of flexibility um, and indeed very powerful skill sets out there uh, that you can engage for a particular uh, a period and then when, when it's completed um, then that cost stops. Very powerful mechanism indeed and, and many economies don't have, have it to the extent that it exists in this country. Um, Things are much more um, regulated in France, for instance, and so on. So 
it, it makes for a very, very flexible economy. Um, we, we are, in fact, able to move fantastically quickly. I would not want to see any legislation that would make it harder for us to take the contractors on um, or make it more likely that they leave us or make it more likely that they would be classed as employees or could be classed as employees. It's very important to us we have the flexibility to take on contract workers for the duration of our demand, the project or projects that we give them, and then at the end to be able to finish the contract. I think this is just something we've got to um, recognise as a, as, a, as a country and, a, and as a market generally, that um, we need to get the best out of people and people will vary in the way they wish to work. So I think the whole legislative framework will need to, to be more flexible to allow this sort of new working to, um, to carry on.